Hi, Dr. Mindy Curry here. I'm a naturopath in Portland, Oregon, and I'm going to tell you today a little bit about the medicinal uses of holy basil. That's the one over my shoulder over here in bloom. It's a fragrant and lovely plant, and it's got so many uses, and it's so wonderful. It really has earned its name as holy basil. Um, it's also known as tulsi, or oximum sanctum, and it's a very popular herb in India and Pakistan, and there's actually been quite a bit of scientific research on it that's backed up quite a few of its benefits. Um, holy basil has numerous mechanisms of action, numerous pharmacological active compounds. Its beneficial effects are found across a lot of categories of medical activities such as anti-stress, anti-lipidemic, anti-diabetic, and glycemic lowering properties. It's known as adaptogen and it certainly can help adapt to whatever your health need. Holy basil has been found to protect the organs and tissues against chemical stress from industrial pollutants and heavy metals. It can help you in times of prolonged physical exertion and, and if you're experiencing poor blood flow, holy basil can help you tolerate both cold and excessive noise. It's been studied for its benefits with blood glucose, lowering blood sugars, good for diabetics, uh, helps with blood pressure for hypertensives, and lowers lipid levels. Um, holy basil can even protect your liver, and it was studied in a study for Tylenol poisoning, and it did really well, especially used with milk thistle. <laughs> holy basil even shows strong antibacterial properties, and that's against a whole range of human and animal pathogens, so it can also have uses as a hand sanitizer, a mouthwash for bad breath and to prevent cavities. It can be used to heal wounds, to help preserve foods, and it even can be useful for travelers trying to avoid getting sick off the local bacteria. Um, it's used daily in religious rituals and it is indeed considered a holy plant. So holy basil is often consumed fresh kind of as a vegetable or a seasoning or a flavoring. Um, it can also be preserved. It can be made into a tea, dry or fresh. And it can also be tinctured in alcohol, which both preserves, extracts, and potentiates the medicinal value. Um, and makes for an easy to travel with formula and something that uh, can mix well with other things. And that's what I'm gonna show you today is how to make a tincture out of holy basil. And so here it is, beautiful holy basil. You can see it's flowering, and this is the perfect time to harvest because there's a lot of extra compounds and oils that come. And the plant is trying to do its thing. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to cut off the flowering tops. I usually go about halfway down, maybe a third of the way down, just so that the plant uh, has plenty more strength to grow new tops and that way I can harvest again a second time or just get the seeds and be able to spread them next year. Okay we're gonna harvest some of these guys. These flowering tops. they beautiful? Oh, they smell divine. I wish I could all smell them. Here, take a good whiff. Mmm. Oh, ah, delightful. That seems like a good shave for today. Let's take these back into the kitchen and make some medicine. And here we are with my harvested holy basil. Observe the beautiful little purple flowers here. It's got a square, square stem, a very mint-like leaf. And the smell, the smell is really how you're gonna identify holy basil from other plants with mint leaves and purple flowers. In any case, what we're going to do with these is make a wonderful tincture. And to do that, we need to chop these down to size so that all the little surfaces can 
get extracted best by the alcohol solvent. Now that looks pretty good. Here we have our cut holy basil. I'm going to turn that into a tincture by putting it in a jar and adding vodka, 80 proof vodka to that jar. So let's do it. You really want to get your jar pretty full. You want to have kind of a firm feeling but a little bit of give. You want it, don't want it too tight so that the alcohol just sits at the top and can't penetrate to the bottom. But you also don't want it too weak where you just have a few leaves in there. It's like a vodka flavoring or something. No, this is not going to be a flavored vodka at the end. This is going to be a tincture, a medicinal tincture that's no good to drink for fun. It's going to be very strong, very wonderful. There we go, we've got all those little plants in there. I'm gonna take our vodka, just pour it in. Fill it all the way to the top. One thing you wanna make sure is that the edge is not got any gook stuck to it. Get all that gook down in there before you put the lid on, because if those leaves are squishing in there, they're gonna kind of spoil and discolor. I'm going to carefully put that lid on to where nothing's sticking out the sides. Screw it on. Now you're going to take this and you're going to keep that in a cool, dry place um, for probably about um, six weeks, a couple months. And ideally, you want to shake it every day or pretty often just to get that, uh, that vodka touching all the different plant matters in there. And that'll extract your holy basil into a wonderful tincture. At the end of that time, you can squeeze that out, um, remove all the little chunks, and have a nice clear tincture. That can be done in cheesecloth or with a tincture press. Have some great medicine, guys. So one of my favorite uses for holy basil is as a nervine, and I like to use it in combination with a few other things. Things like ashwagandha, passion flower, skull cap, mm, linden blossoms, hawthorn. These are all really great things to put with holy basil to make a good relaxing effect that may gladden you. Mm, oh, mimosa tree. Don't forget the tree of happiness. That would be a wonderful thing to combine with this. It's just wonderful. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs, and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> so don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area, and I also have an office in Milwaukee.